Hi, so many people asked me um, how come you've never done any projects using the OpenWRT firmware. Um, I've done things uh, with uh, DDWRT and a Tomato firmware, but nothing with the OpenWRT. Uh, two people. What? I mean, two people asked. Uh, in fact, there was only one person asking it twice. OpenWRT is actually one of the oldest third-party firmware that you can install on your wireless router and it comes with a lot of features. It is the oldest one, I mean compared to the DDWRT and Tomato that you just talked about, uh, OpenWRT was actually developed first. Right, so in the first part of this video, I'm going to install the OpenWRT firmware on my TP-Link Archer A7 wireless router. And I'm going to show you how we can do that. But in the second part, I'm going to reinstall the factory firmware, because that is something that we might have to do at some point. And with those things out of the way, hopefully sometime soon, we're going to do some cool OpenWRT projects. So without further ado, let's begin. First off, I'm going to go to the OpenWRT website, then supported devices, and then click on this link which says I have a router and want to know if it is supported. I already know that my router is supported, but if yours is different, this is the place to search it, find it, and make sure it is fully supported before installing the firmware. So here's my wireless router, TP-Link Archer A7 version 5. It has a page too, so I'm gonna go there, because here I will have all the information I need, including the OpenWRT firmware that I should first install, and the one that I should upgrade to afterwards. So there will be two steps. First, I will install this one, then I will upgrade to the other one. I'm also going to download the stock firmware, which I will need it later on in the second part of this video. There are two methods that I can use to install the OpenWRT firmware. One of them is very easy and the other one is a little bit more complicated and involves using the TFTP. I'm going to actually use the easy one in the first part of this video and the TFTP one in the second part of this video. So I'll power on the wireless router and make sure it is not connected to the internet or any wired or wireless clients. Now on my computer where I have already downloaded the OpenWRT firmware, I'm going to disable the wireless interface and connect it with an ethernet cable to one of the LAN ports of the router. Because I want to make sure the computer is only communicating with the router through the cable. At this point, my computer must have received an IP address from the wireless router. So I'm going to open a browser, type in the router's IP address, which in my case is 192.168.0.1, and then log into the router. Here I'm going to go to the Advanced tab, then System Tools, and then Firmware Upgrade. Now I can click browse and select the first OpenWRT firmware that I should install. And finally click upgrade. Now I just need to wait for a few minutes until the router reboots. After the installation of OpenWRT, the IP address of the wireless router has changed from 192.68.0.1 to 192.68.1.1. So I'm gonna enter the new IP address of the wireless router in the browser, and as you can see, the OpenWRT has been successfully installed. I will choose a username and password for the router and then log in. It is now time to upgrade the firmware, so I'll go to here, and in the flash new firmware image section, I will upload the second OpenWRT file that I have downloaded. I'm gonna wait for a few minutes until it's done, and then I can log in again. Alright, now we're gonna go back to the stock firmware. And according to the OpenWRT's instructions, we're gonna use a TFTP server. Basically, this is how it's gonna work. There is a bootloader in the wireless router which has a TFTP client with the IP address of 192.168.0.86. 
When the router is in the recovery mode, the TFTP client is configured to look for this specific firmware file in this specific TFTP server. So the router can actually install that firmware. In other words, if I manually assign this IP address to my computer and install a TFTP server software on it and then rename the stock firmware that I have downloaded to this and put the router in the recovery mode, I should be good to go. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I have already installed and started the SolarWinds free TFTP server. There are different TFTP servers that I can use for this purpose, but I personally like the SolarWinds, so I have installed and started that. I've also unzipped the stock TP-Link firmware file, renamed it to this, and copied it to the TFTP server root directory, which in my case is here. My computer is already connected to the router with an Ethernet cable. I just need to manually assign this IP address to its LAN interface, and it is something that I can do here. So my computer, which is the TFTP server, is now ready. All is left is to put the router in the recovery mode, and this is how I can do it. I'll power off the router, then press and hold down the reset button. As I'm holding it down, I'm gonna power on the router and keep on holding the reset button for another 10 seconds or so. As you can see in the TFTP server, the router has downloaded this file from my computer and it is now busy installing it. I just need to wait for a few minutes until it's done. I can now log into the router and confirm that the stock firmware has been successfully installed. Alright, that was pretty much it. I was able to install the OpenWRT firmware and then go back to the stock firmware. The first part was very easy. I just had to upload the OpenWRT file in the firmware upgrade section. The second part though was a little bit more tricky, but at the same time fun, because I had to create a TFTP server to be able to upload the stock firmware. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button. And also please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, so you won't miss the upcoming videos. Thank you very much, and I will see you next time.